Welcome back. It is the COHSS, the Central Ohio High School Showcase. My man, the veteran Lee Saw, I thought we were going to bring him in, bring my intro back in for me. It was okay. This is a good intro right here. Yeah. That's a good beat. Feeling good? Might pop your head a little bit. <laughs> Might throw some little rap tunes in there. All right. Hey, let's get back into it. The phone number here, 614-641-0674, 614-641-0674. Zach Fleer is in the house. Big Game James is here. I'm Derek Owens Jr., your host. And with us today, from the west side. West side? Briggs High School, four-year starting point guard, leader of the team. And just published today, third team all Metro. Briggs on Danny Corbett Jr. What's up, man? How you doing, man? Doing good? Yeah. Say a little tired, you got off the road. Yeah. Visits for school. Yeah. How'd the visit go? Oh, it was nice. It was real nice. Got to, you know, go down there, take a chill. Came by late. Uh, played with the guys. Stayed overnight. Had to get up and move every day. <laughs> you good? All right. Um, so, you know, playing four years at Briggs under Coach Rice, how do you feel you've grown in the most ways since, you know, your freshman season? I feel like I've grown in every which way. You can there grow we go. as a man, there we go. as in all types of basketball aspects. I just feel like he's an amazing coach and he's a great guy, period. So in every which way I've grown, in, in every which way you could think of, he, he, he really helped me improve in everything. What's your, what would you say your greatest memory is from your career so far? Probably the one on Ridge win. That was that was that's probably that's the first thing that comes to my mind. Easily. Last season, yeah, yeah. That was when you beat one of Reds, yeah, that was that was <laughs> fine. That was a good win. That was a, that was a great. Oh, I just want to ask you, just to bounce off Zach. And I, I mean, you played for Tony Rice. To me, he was like a legend. Um, he was like around my same class, and I, I remember I, we all used to look at him because he was one of the big big point guards back in the day. Nobody was big point guards back in the day. That right then, everybody was like, if you were like six three or six four, you were going in the post. He was one of the first guys that was bringing the ball up. I mean, you had him, Tommy Fagan, Lamont Barnes. What do you feel like? Um, did you feel like you had to live up to that? I mean, when you see that great history of guard play and anything like that, does, is that something like you want to be like? I want to cement my name because of these guys that played before me. Um, I never really looked at it like that. I never looked at it like oh. I got a great coach, or I, it was some great uh, players that came through. I got to live up to that hype. I always wanted to be the best, though. Like, mm -hmm. I always wanted to to stamp my name. Like, my dad always say, like, it, it'd be 10, 20 years now, and, and Rice and them still to this day talk about how they did back in high school. You know what I mean? <laughs> Debating. The, I, I was right. better than you. I did this. I, I did this. I dropped 50 on you. Yeah. So, my dad always try to let me know, like you want to do that, like like twenty years now when you when you and your friends talking about basketball, they want to be talking about Corbin. They, you always want to have something to say about right. yourself. So I always wanted to, you know, what I mean, be a. I just want to be a legend. Mm -hmm. I always wanted to, like, forever my name lasts when it comes to Briggs and basketball. So like anytime someone brings Briggs basketball up, I always want my name to come up. Yeah, that's that's the way you want. Absolutely, a thousand point score. Yeah. And a four-year starter, so four-year starter, only That's third big. player in Briggs history to do that. That's too. huge. I mean, it's 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 uh, what it shows me is a a because I look at it from a lot of different perspectives, right? And it just shows the kind of person, the kind of young man you are, right? Because to be a four-year starter, that means for four years you had to be eligible. Right, yeah, yep, yep. <laughs> you know what I mean. So that's the that's the number one part. And to be a thousand point score, it showed that you were consistent from the day you stepped on the court until the last game you played. You know what I'm saying? That that's if we just did the easy math, that's 250 points a year for four years. And he's you been a leader. I mean, right? Ever since his freshman season, my first game I watched him was on the road against Afro Centric in yeah, freshman high. season. <laughs> yeah. um, and Briggs was up like it might have been like a three point game, like a minute left. Um, someone was at the line. I think um, Dante Brown might have been at the line for Briggs. My memory, I don't know how I remember that, but and that's what you uh, do. <laughs> Aversentric had like a little mini huddle during the free throw shot, and, I, and, and I Danny went down there and was in the huddle. <laughs> As a freshman to do that, I think you know, being fourteen, fifteen years old, a lot of kids don't think to do that because it wasn't a real timeout. So he he could have done that. And he was you know able to do that. He did that. Briggs ends up winning that game. Um, 
you know, for Briggs, that was a big win for you guys in that season. Uh, they battled some adversity then. Uh, it was just a terrific game, and Danny, you know, he had, he had a terrific game uh, that night, you know, in that little cracker box gym at Afrocentric. <laughs> right, well, back then, for <laughs> sure. <laughs> but just talk, oh, about, man, what, talk cool. about what it's been like uh, for four years, being the leader of the basketball team, uh, being the leader in the school. What's that been like? Uh, it was kind of hard, but it's it's nice at the end of the day, you know, throughout the school, everyone, you know what I mean? They look up to you as more than you ever know, so uh, – it, it, it was, you know what I mean? Like I said, every, everything had their ups and downs, but it was kind of hard. But at the end of the day, like, yeah, it's, it's always going to be some type of great enjoyment in that, you know. Uh, everyone I see always be like, man, I feel like you've been in school for six, six, seven, eight, six, That's eight time. years. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be weird next year for me. I mean, ever since I've been covering the game, you've been playing. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah the th- when I see Briggs, it's not going to be a corporate in the box score anymore, so that's going to be strange. <laughs> um, yeah, it feels like you've been around forever. I mean, that just speaks to your consistency and, uh, you know, the way that you've really crafted this career. And I guess we can go to the next topic. You, know, you had a Facebook post recently that, you know, drew a lot of comments. And it's one of the most commented posts I've ever seen. But, you know, you basically mentioned, you know, I could have went to Northland. I could have went to Walnut Ridge. could have went to these other schools. But you chose to stay at Briggs. Um, you know, doing that in this day and age where a lot of kids, you know, try to, a lot of kids are front runners nowadays. They want to just go play with the best kids and, you know, win the most games, kind of taking off, you know, guys in the NBA that are doing that. Um, for you, from a character standpoint, and I guess from, um, you know, toughness standpoint, you know, staying at Briggs this whole time, you know, how has that, you know, made you into a better player and I guess a better leader, um, you know, dealing with the adversity and becoming the player that you are? Um, Coach Vic, he said the realest thing to me at the city championship game. He basically said that to me, like, you could be where Brandon Wall is at right now, playing for Northland. You could be, you know, you could have played with Warner Ridge. A lot of people told me I should have went to Warner Ridge. Um, but will you be the same player that you are right now? That was a great question. That was a, And it was a great info that he definitely fed to me that day. Um, and that's real. I don't know if I'd be the same player I am if I would have went to Warner Ridge, you know. I don't know if I'm the same player. I'll, I'll be the same player if I would have went to any other big school because I think no one know me like Coach Rice knew me, you know what I mean? I think he's like – I don't think no one's as good as him at coach-wise also. So, you know what I mean? Like he, he he do a lot in the in the summer, me and him every day working out. Uh, a lot of coaches don't do that. I remember I was talking to uh, Goose. He was like, I wish I had someone to work me out. And that was big because, you know what I mean, Coach Rice do that with me every day. And uh, the, my, not just Coach Rice, the whole coaching staff, Coach McFadden and Coach Julian, they in the gym with us, they hoop with us all the time. It's Coach a family Rice. feel. Like, I mean, you see it. It's yeah. different. You, I mean, you go on, I, the book, yeah, and, you go on and then, Facebook and yeah, absolutely. You, you see the videos. You know, I, I've played at open gyms with these guys before, too. I'm not very good, but I've, <laughs> I've played at open gyms with these guys. Um, it's just a family atmosphere. And I think with that, you know, they get the most out of their talent, mm-hmm. you know, in that St. Charles game, you know, in the tournament this year, you know, Briggs was, you know, from a talent standpoint, height, whatever, you know, they were, you know, the underdog in mm-hmm. that game. But, you know, third quarter they're leading, they're up five at one point. Uh, you know, they maximized their matchup, and they played St. Charles better than any other team that, you know, went up against them this year other than Pick Central, who was, you know, the better team in that matchup. They were my if – I, if I had to pick an upset out of all the first-round games that I've seen, uh, it was Briggs over St. Charles, and I picked it here on the show, and you were the main reason for that. Just the confidence that not only the, the, the coaching staff, Coach Rice, has in you, but the confidence that you exuded in your teammates – to you know to face a hurdle that large but i want to ask you this because you brought up coach rice and let's go back into it a little bit um is he the main reason for you to stay at briggs or what was the deciding factors for you not to make a move and to take one the challenge of uh of what you have accomplished at briggs he was definitely the main reason i stayed at briggs because like i said earlier he's just to me one the, 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 the best coach and the development piece, he the, just the investment that he put into basketball. He loved basketball just as much as I do. Mm-hmm. You know, we waking up at four thirty, uh, going out east, lifting in the morning. I love that, and he loved that too. So our bond is ridiculous. So I'm not sure if any other coaches like that. It um, was it was good to see you guys at the state mm-hmm. at the state games the other day. Yeah, yep, uh, absolutely. You know, yeah, both of us. Yeah, yep. yeah. So yeah, he was definitely the the reason I stayed. I don't think I probably would have stayed if. He would have left. I wouldn't. I probably would have went wherever he went. So, yeah. Loyalty. 
Like that. Yeah. Let, let's, yeah. let's talk. I know. I know you know all the accolades over there. Let, let run, let's run some of them down, man. Four year starter. I know it's four year starter. Thousand tremendous. point score. Forty one points against Marion Franklin. Um, he probably has a Briggs record for most games started. I would imagine. You know, Rice may have it. I don't know. I don't know if you guys have kept that stat, but you've started every game. Tone is holding on to that one. He ain't showed you that one yet. You know what I mean? He got that one over here. He ain't going to give you that one just yet. Tone, he ain't going to give up water tricks now. It's at least 80 games, which, I mean, that's incredible. You don't see that in college very often. I mean, guys don't say four years mostly, but in high school that rarely happens. Uh, There's only a handful of players that have done that. You know, Dane Goodwin might be a kid that does that. Jeremiah Francis might be a kid that does that, but you hardly see that. Not a lot of kids can do that. They can and not and, and play full <laughs> seasons too, and you know a physical league and do what he does, you know, in games like Dayton Dunbar where that game it felt like it was one on five at some point. <laughs> I remember that he laughed because he he felt it too high. There's <laughs> <laughs> ten of them all here. <laughs> hey, we're coming up on a break. We got Danny Corbett Jr. in the building. Uh, great day today on the COHSS. But look, you can call or text the show six one four six four one zero six seven four if you got questions for Danny Corbett. Um, by all means, uh, bring them in. We got Zach Fleer from 270 Hoops, Big Game James. The veteran lead saws over there still putting stuff together. I'm Derek Owens, Jr. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. This is Bob McElligot, the radio voice of the Columbus Blue Jackets, and you're listening to the new generation of sports talk radio, scoreonair.com, the score. Nasty's Sports Bar in Reynoldsburg is under new management. Located at 6150 East Main Street, the home for Taco Tuesday is rejuvenated and the home for great food and family fun. Nasty's Sports Bar is a great place for happy hour, serving $2 domestics, $3 glasses of wine, and $5 appetizers Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. Call 614-864-2827 to find out the daily specials. Nasty's, great food, family fun, with a cool name. Listen to scoreonair.com for your chance to win. Every Friday, we will be giving away a prize pack, and here's how you can qualify. Send us a message with your name, phone number, email, and date of birth to our Facebook or Twitter accounts. Just search Your Score On Air, or you can call or text any of our live shows at 614-641-0674 and tell them you want to win. It's that easy. A new winner will be selected every Friday at 7 p.m. This is your home for the new generation of sports talk radio and weekly prize giveaways score on air.com the score i'm jake safranco with your sports doc minute brought to you by the ohsaa and the ohio media school now here's the sports doc dr chris stankovich does your son or daughter struggle with nerves when it comes to competing in sports if so it's important to know that this is perfectly normal in fact professional athletes struggle with the very same anxieties that your son or daughter does while competing nerves are a result largely because of cognitive appraisals and what that means is how we perceive things often dictates how our bodies will respond you might want to think of this as fight or flight in fact when i work with athletes, I ask them, do they view pressure situations as challenges or do they see them as threats? If they view them as challenges, they often gain confidence, sharpen their focus, and become even more motivated to succeed. But if they see the situation as threatening, that's when anxiety creeps in and usually compounds matters. So it's important that you look at skills that can help, including deep breathing, using imagery, and reminding your child of the importance of positive self-talk. This has been your Sports Doc Minute, brought to you by the OHSAA and the Ohio Media School. Enrolling now, visit B on air.com. Matty Ice here, proud alum of the Ohio Media School. Are you looking for a new career, not just a job, but a fulfilling career? If you want to work in media, radio, television, sports broadcasting, or film and video production, you need to check out the Ohio Media School's Columbus campus today. Their updated radio and television broadcasting program will even have you ready to work in a field you'll love in just eight months. Stop by the Ohio Media School's audio and video studios today to see it for yourself. Visit beonair.com. That's beonair.com. You like talking Buckeyes? Yes! Oh my God! So do we. Just not all the time. We're home for the largest variety of sports talk. Largest variety of sports talk. This is the new generation of sports talk radio. New generation of sports talk radio. Schoolonair.com. The school. The school. And now, broadcast. 
Broadcasting live from the Ohio Media School in the SCORE Studios. Showcasing high school student athletes around the Central Ohio area. If it's in season, we on it. Hey, you know we do this for the kids, man. Featuring D.O. Jr. and Big Game James. What's good, Big Game James? How you feeling, D.O. Jr.? You're listening to the Central Ohio High School Showcase. Ohio High School Showcase. Only on scoreonair.com. Yeah, you know the intro. I mean, so we had to get it back. Indeed. Shout out to my man, the veteran Lee Sauls over there. It's the Central Ohio High School Showcase, the C-O-H-S-S. We are back here on Score On Air, the new generation of sports talk radio, the score from 270 Hoops, Zach Fleer, Big Game James, Danny Corbett Jr. from Briggs High School, all city, all district, all metro, all – all, all, all everything. All everything. All, all everything. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, man? How you feeling, man? You all right? I'm feeling good. So let's just uh, – what you want to get into, man? You got anything on your mind? You send out a lot of tweets, a lot of Facebook posts, stuff like that, man. How are you feeling today? <laughs> um, I don't got nothing in my mind at the moment. Um, Zach, maybe you can uh, talk about that. Debate you and Rice is talking about how you think going to a certain school will help you recruit, recruiting and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, well, okay, we did have a you debate. You got to bring group. Rice on this show one time. You know he got a lot to say. I, I Listen, I told I, I told him at the game the other day, yeah. I do not enter the comment section because my phone would never stop and what? I couldn't, you know what I'm saying? I, I, yeah, Coach I Rice gets it in on the comments. Once he jumps in that conversation, but he going to be in there. But let me, <laughs> before we go to the debate that y'all had, because obviously that's something that you've thought about as well. Right, yeah. and you talked about how other individuals have told you that hey, stand up, Briggs. It gave you this character. It made you the man you are today. Okay, but with that, the growth and the maturity, and you know, going through ups and downs, learning how to deal with adversity. Right. On the flip side of that, you know, some people say, "Hey, man, I don't like it here. I'm gonna go over here and then not deal with the with the adversity." But then that may come back to affect them later on. You know, you brought it up. To Zach, so I want you to answer it, not Coach Rice. I want to know your feeling because you're a senior now. You know your career is over, so you don't got to necessarily hold back anything as far as your thoughts are concerned. Do you think that there is a major impact in the schools you go to on how you get recruited? Well, if you're like a Jerome Hunter, uh, Kayla Weston type guy, no, no matter what school you go to, they, you're gonna get looks. Um, probably it's a little influence for. A guy that's not, I don't know, as in, like, David Dennis. Like, that's not all the way D1. Like, everyone knows right. flat out if he's really D1. Or he might be D2 in some people's mm-hmm. eyes. So, I mean, I, I guess it's a little influence with them. But for the most part, really, no. For I, David, I mean, David himself, he told me if he could redo it, he would he would want to get Hannah. Because he's like, I you know, Harvest Prep, for him, he's an all-around point guard. He's kind of a pass-first player. Mm-hmm. And at Harvest Prep, you know, he's the best player, so he had to be the primary scorer. And a lot of coaches didn't see that. And I also think I – don't, I don't know if it's necessarily your high school anymore. Like, it is important. It is, you know, definitely important because if you're a kid, say you go to Pickerington Central, um, you know, and you're not a Sterling or a Jeremiah or Adrian Nelson, well, when, you know, North Carolina and Creighton and West Virginia and Indiana and then Ohio University and Bowling Green are all coming for those two guys and they can get the, a chance to see you – you know, it's easier to get on the radar than being, you know, an Adrian Nelson at another program. Absolutely. Um, but I if, was, you're, if you're D one, you're D one anywhere. That's that's what I that's what I believe. If you can play, it doesn't matter where you go. It's just from an exposure standpoint only. It if you're at a better program, logically, you're going to be seen by more coaches. Well, the kid that came to mind as you both were just talking and you was bringing up names is uh, Debaji Walker. Correct. Uh, I feel the same thing for him. You know, uh, he was at Independence, like I said, the primary. Do everything. literally all yeah everything you know uh, I think I, I think I seen him at the scores table one time after he got a rebound he was marking his uh, own rebounds in uh, <laughs> but uh, no I mean no it, like the exposure is what it is it is the news is going to come to certain areas first coaches will go to certain areas first but I think just, we're also reaching an era where slipping through the cracks doesn't happen as much as it may have in the past I mean that's true it's true and I think. For Debaji, I think staying at Independence was his best decision. Now that I think of it, 
because it allowed him to show his full arsenal of his game. You know, if he's at another program and he's just playing on the wing and, you know, going baseline and dunking on people and not really doing else, nothing else, you don't see his full skill set. Um, and in that game against Eastmore in the tournament, he showed his entire f- skill set. I mean, he was the best player on the floor. Uh, Tavion might have been better that night, but as far as stat-wise and, you know, the shots he was making, I mean, Debaji was incredible that year in, or in that game. And I think, you know, Holland's done a good job, you know, reaching out to schools for him. He's probably going to end up going prep school, you know, getting stronger, getting another year of development. So he's a kid, if he develops like I think he can, he's going to be Division One regardless, and he stayed in independence. So let, I think it shows you, that if you're D1, it doesn't matter r- where you're quick, at. Real quick, let me, let me ask you this. Um, you've, you've started for four years. Yes. That's an incredible feat. Give me, give me some battles. Who, who's the guys over your four years? And you're like, man – like after the game, win or lose, I'm not talking about the score of the game necessarily, but who were some guys when you went home and you was like, man, like that was a good one today. Me and him went at it. Uh, I never felt like any guard really. I never played against a guard and really be like, damn, he he nice. Or I just I just haven't. I just. I just never played against a guard and be like, he's nice. I well, not necessarily you gave him the credit, but just in the game itself. Like you both had just good games. Uh the first person I come to mind is Houston Smith. He was just, he was a grown man. <laughs> against us. He was a grown man. He mm-hmm. played against us. He was just straight post work, straight give me the ball, one or two dribbles, layup. Mm-hmm. So that's one guy that definitely come to mind. I'm like, okay, he he's a he's a real good a real good player. But uh, that's the first place I, that's the person that come to my so, mind. Yeah. Uh, I remember you and Brandon Pascal from Warner Ridge used to go at it. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. He was a definitely by far. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. 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 I, I told uh, he the he the toughest guy I ever played against. Easily, and easy. that was a lot of that football mentality as well. Brandon was a really good uh, yeah. a football player. Shout out, Dad Clayton. What's up, man? You watching the show today? I see you out there. Hit me up. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I, you know, I, when you when you become a great player, you know, sometimes you just want to know like who are the rivals, like who are the guys, or maybe you get up to go against you know i know certain teams necessarily that come to mind uh but i'm gonna tell you the thing i liked about your game as well not only did you get the 20 points per game but you got the assists as well and you know the rebounds right absolutely i'll tell you i told you this on the phone before uh we talked a little while ago actually brandon's dad brandon's dad clayton uh, he's the first person who ever told me about you i asked about danny corbett and he was just like man he's like look man tone has really taught this kid the game and he's bought in he's like man Danny get a triple double in the game like it, right. you know what I'm saying it don't matter like he, he does it all so that's just uh, what people have thought about you over the years um, but distributing like on the next level not really probably be taking shots because you're a really good scorer but do you look to have more of an impact to distributing the ball on the next level yes 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 um, that's my that's my game that's that's what I mainly do is, is pass the ball that's probably one of the greatest aspects of my game so definitely but uh talking about brandon like he was going back to him he was by far the best guard i played against i mean i was a freshman he's a senior but it was no bringing the ball up against him how do you (laughs) feel about the city league i guess when you were a freshman and sophomore do you think it's at the same level now or do you think it's nowhere near nowhere i think High school basketball is nowhere near. I mean, your freshman year, I mean, in the city south alone. I think, yeah, my freshman year. Charles at West, and you go to Eastmore, and you had Jamal Hughes and all those guys over at Eastmore, yeah. Jalen Lewis. I mean, Jalen Lewis and Xavier Holson Sims didn't even start for those guys. A lot of uh, the, like, the, 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 a lot of the basketball is, is, is led by the youth this, yeah. now, now, now times. Like, it's a lot of youth that's, that's going nuts, like Don Penn, uh, Von Von, Davis. Uh, it's, but Jeremiah, I mean, I mean, they all they all great, but it's it's nowhere near when I came in as a freshman. It's, it's nowhere near. But they still like they still great players. But I'm saying it's it's, it's nowhere near. But those near. young players are gonna feel the same way about you. Not that you played against all <clears> those young guys, but like uh, you know, it's gonna be a freshman out there. We'll be doing this again sometimes. You'll be like, man, I remember playing against Andy Corbin. Man, like, he was a grown man out there. Man, I didn't get around him. You know. <laughs> yeah, but. Oh, I was just going to say, just bouncing off what we were talking about with the Division One, do we think that it's like, um, you know how so many people have, like even parents, yeah. look at Division One like like that's the cream. The of, ultimate goal, yeah. That's the ultimate goal. Do we? Do you feel like, did you lose sight of, well, I'm, I'm, I want to just be Division One because so many kids do that. Right. And then 
they get influenced and maybe they're not really that good, not saying you or anything, but I'm just saying not really, really that good. And then they get put in a situation where it's not a good situation because everybody's looking at the division one that happens and nobody too. looks at the division twos or the NA. Mm-hmm. Those schools are good, still good schools for you to play at and you will right. still get looked at. I think a lot of times kids don't realize how good D2 and D3 basketball is until you actually go to a game and you watch and like, holy crap, these guys are good. Um, so they don't understand that, you know, I think playing college basketball in general is a privilege in itself, you know, especially if you can get your education paid for. That's really all that matters. But you look at a program like Fairmont State, they're playing in the Division II National Championship, I think, believe, today or tomorrow. They would finish probably third or fourth in the MAC conference. They, they, they'd have a chance to possibly win, you know, if they're in the, uh, the Sun, not the Summit League, but the Horizon League. They could possibly win that matchup. You know, Jared Calhoun's the coach there, you know, coached under uh, Bob Huggins at West Virginia. You know, if. It, it, t- people are talking about him possibly getting the Cleveland State job. They hired Dennis Felton yesterday, but you know, I feel like his team could beat Cleveland State this year. Um, and that just speaks to how good D2 is. You know, I, I watched Ohio Dominican and Lake Erie College earlier this year. You might have been at that game. I don't know if you were there or not, but, you know, Jordan Humphrey, who was the MVP of Westerville South in the state title run last year, you know, outplaying D1 guys, you know, he, he started on a D2 team and, you know, still it was a struggle for him to score. Um, and that just shows, you know, how good Division Two basketball is. Absolutely. We're coming up on another break here. We got Briggs on Danny Corbett Jr. We're just going to get into more uh, with him. We've got a couple segments left. Uh, we still got a lot more to talk about. It's the Central Ohio High School Showcase. Look, we come back from this break. Call or text the show if you got any questions. 614-641-0674. I'll leave you with the number. We'll be right back. Broadcasting from the Score On Air studios at the Ohio Media School in Columbus, Ohio. Your home. Your home. For all the latest sports news and talk, scoreonair.com. The Score. Are you a sports fan? Do you have a mobile phone? Great. That's all you need to stay up to date with scoreonair.com, the new generation of sports talk radio with original talk shows starting every two hours covering every sport from every angle. From basketball. To hockey. To martial arts. We cover all Ohio sports. We cover all Ohio sports. Just go to scoreonair.com or download the TuneIn Radio app and search Score On Air. You'll be part of the action in no time. Whether you're stuck in traffic, at the grocery store, studying at the library, anywhere for that matter. Anywhere for that matter. Tune in anytime to get your sports fix. Follow us on social media or go to scoreonair.com for even more original content, including play-by-play of local high school and college games, sports articles, and podcasts. Scoreonair.com is your home for the best analysis, coverage, and lukewarm sports takes. The best part, we're broadcasting live right here in Columbus. Oh, wait. Oh, yo. Scoreonair.com, the new generation of sports talk radio. The score. Are you someone who has always dreamed of a career in sports media? The Ohio Media School now offers a six-month sports emphasis program to prepare you for a whole new career. Whether it's radio or television, play-by-play or production, the Ohio Media School has you covered. You will receive training from professionals that are actually in the industry. The Ohio Media School will get you where you need to be for a successful career in this exciting, expanding field. To schedule a visit, call 614-655-5250 or go to beonair.com. Stop dreaming about a career in sports and make it a reality at the Ohio Media School. The new generation of sports talk radio. Here's your score on air.com score center update. The Blue Jackets may have secured a playoff spot, but there are still games to be played and points to be gained. The next opportunity to do just that comes Wednesday when the Jackets welcome the Toronto Maple Leafs to Nationwide Arena for the second time this season. The last time these two teams met, Toronto was coming into town off a back-to-back, and the Jackets won 5-2. The puck drops at 7 p.m. on Fox Sports Ohio. The Buckeyes will have a couple of famous faces on the sidelines for their spring football game April 15th. College Football Hall of Fame coach Lou Holtz and Nike co-founder Bill Knight will serve as guest coaches for the Scarlet and Gray team. Holtz was an assistant coach on Ohio State's 1968 National Championship team. Knight helped build Nike into the world's largest athletic footwear, clothing, and equipment company. The company has been a partner with Ohio State for more than two decades and last year signed a 15-year sponsorship deal with the Buckeyes. The Cavs play against the Denver Nuggets tonight in the third game of this road trip. The Cavs won 125-109 to on February 11th at the Q. Tip-off tonight is at 9 p.m. on Fox Sports Ohio. Former Indiana coach Tom Crean says he doesn't view his Hoosiers tenure as a failure despite not reaching the ultimate goal of winning an NCAA championship. For the latest news, scores, and updates, keep it locked right here to the new generation of sports talk radio, scoreonair.com, 
the score. You're listening to the home of heart-pounding, adrenaline-pumping sports. Broadcasting from Ohio Media School in the greatest city in the state. In the greatest state in the country. In the greatest country in the world. You're listening to scoreonair.com. Welcome back. Hey, we just having a little fun here in between breaks on the Central Ohio High School Showcase, the COHSS. Call or text the show, 614-641-0674. We got Danny Corbett Jr. in the house, man. Uh, like we said, all everything, man. I, don't know, I want him to try to... The, the award that he got today was uh, All-Metro third team. Congratulations again, sir. Thank you. You, I mean, you, you the first one to me about it. I didn't even know about it. <laughs> <laughs> Flash I, I, breaking news I, I, here. Breaking news here. Like I didn't know. Tell me about the. Uh, I made an All Star game or something. I didn't even know about. It. He texted me. He was like, "Congrats." I was like, "About what?" <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Oh, okay, thanks." I didn't even realize. That's uh, you know that's a, that's a good thing, man. When when the accolades don't even matter because you're just doing it for the love. Talk about that. Uh, yeah, I just I just play to win. That's all I ever care about. I don't care if I. Average two, and we win every game. I love that. I just play for the game. I just, I just want to win. That's the only thing I care about, and nothing else. That's awesome, right? Oh, I, you know, we, we, I was looking up few, for a few things. I was seeing that um, if you had a person that you wanted to meet, and uh, you said Kyrie Irving. Yeah, tell me why. Yeah. I said Bernie Mac. I know, I know, I know. I know. You said Bernie Mac first. <laughs> you always got to preface it dead or alive. Yeah, okay. you, a question okay. like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I know yeah. Bernie Mac. Shout outs to Bernie Mac, definitely. But tell me why Kyrie Irving. Um, I just feel like he's a cool guy. Like mm-hmm. you know, me watching his videos. Do you believe the Earth is flat? No, I, I, <laughs> I don't know if you can hang out with Kyrie. Then I don't. <laughs> you stay off that topic. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I stay off that topic. But he just seemed like a cool guy, yeah. and then you know he's Kyrie, mm-hmm. so I know he be going hard. So oh, he I goes hard. Lo- love to be around that. So let's get into some fun with with Danny. You, that was one. You guys more go ahead. Well, we we talked about Tom and Jerry. Favorite color is red, right? What yeah. kind of movies do you like? Horror, comedy? Oh, I tell love, me. I love mystery because I hate movies where you can guess. Like most of the movies, you go you, you always guess. Like, oh, this gonna happen at the end. He gonna win. He gonna do this. So, but I, so that's why I love mystery. I love heist movies. The the the, the planning. Uh, uh, you mentioned one movie. Tell me, tell me what it is. Joy. There it is. Yeah. See, Why? See, my dad made me watch that movie <laughs> over and over and over. You again. can't help but watch that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, my dad made me watch a lot of movies just like for lessons, and mm-hmm. uh, it did. He always bring up Achilles, and right? About how tough he was, mm-hmm. just like fearless, mm-hmm. and, and that's what he made me watch that movie over and over and over again. He really put me in, my, in, in his head. Like the beginning of the movie, the boy said, "Man." That's the biggest guy I ever seen. I won't fight him. And Achilles is like, that's why your name would never be remembered. Exactly. So, wow. Yeah, so my dad made me watch that movie over and over again. He was probably so. playing that movie for a game. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but I I'm about to go Achilles on you today. <laughs> <laughs> if you follow if you follow uh, uh, Coach Tony Rice on Facebook and stuff, like he would send out messages to you, sometimes subliminal, sometimes not. You know what I mean about – just you know how he wanted you to maybe be more aggressive, or uh, just a little message here about you know the the, the games uh, coming up this week. I used to notice that, and that's a great bond to have with your coach, where you two can go back and forth on uh, social media, and you know he can kind of say things to you that you know that you know about. How was that? Oh, it's, it's great. He talked a lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> he talked a lot of stuff. He talked a lot of stuff. Go. Coach Coach Rice he goes, goes hard. In. He goes in. Definitely <laughs> in the locker room. Yeah, he haven't gone. He haven't went in the locker room this year, but the previous year, I used to be scared of my freshman. Year. I, believe, I believe it. I believe it. Because I mean, even back in his playing days, he he went. If he when he got on the court, he went hard at and he, you. And he talks the I'll talk he, all game <laughs> long. He, he gonna let you every time head. he get a bucket on you. He gonna let you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Shout out to my yeah. boss at work too. Alvin Poindexter played with Tony Rice in high school too. Nice. Really? Yeah. When you posted uh, the Briggs team photo, I was at work and I screenshotted it and showed it to. Uh, my boss, he's like, oh, yeah, there he is right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so watch out for his son, Miles Poindexter. He's seventh grade. He's 6'2 already. And wow. kid got clipped. He's oh. probably going to end up at one of the Westerville schools. Watch out for him. Gotcha. Grader, Miles you heard it here first. 
He always breaking something. <laughs> breaking news. All right, Danny. So Drake just put out a new album. You've mentioned that Drake's. You think he's the greatest rapper of all time? Is that correct? Oh, I, saw oh, it. I, saw it. I saw it. Did I you saw say it? that? I it too. I did seen you it. say that? I, I seen said it. that. Yeah. You said, nah, 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 yeah, yeah. You did. I must have been joking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to pull it up. Nah, pull it up. What do you think see. about that? What do you think about that new Drake album? How you feel I, I like it. I like it. When I first listened to it, like the first eleven songs, I was like, oh, this is the second half of the album. Second half. The second half. If he was second half came back. Yeah, tracks, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah, wasn't yeah. singing all on the whole thing, was he? Not nah. the beginning, he was. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the beginning, he was. Like, <laughs> for the latest I like that. Yeah, yeah. I like it. The album. And then I had to listen to it again. I listened to the second half. I was like, okay, this is real nice. The second album. half is nice. The first half. Yeah. You know, you always got to give those type of albums that second, that second look. You know, when you hear that album that first time, you're like, yeah, I don't yeah, know. And yeah, then yeah, you right. hear that second time, you're <laughs> now, like, I think Biggity Girls. Put the I Biggie, think, I okay, there we go. Okay, there we go. Now, 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 now we're bringing you in. Now we're bringing you in. I took you on Twitter, I said, I said, Biggie to me is the most talented rapper I've ever heard. Bar don't, for bar but, technique. Don't let Rice be inside. No, jigger, 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 <laughs> jigger. He yeah, probably listening. He might call no. in and be like, he might, he might. He's the president of the LeBron James hating cloud. <laughs> <laughs> he, 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 he just wake up I'm like, okay, what can I say bad about LeBron James today? <laughs> but see, but he he love Kobe too. I'm with him with with the J. <laughs> J is the greatest, but you know, uh, as far as hating LeBron, I don't know about that one. Oh, man, he, 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 Kobe God, he hate LeBron. LeBron. <laughs> he I don't know what Kobe it is. Oh, he, oh. Who's your favorite basketball player? LeBron. Me too. Uh, so I bet y'all. I, like, be, I, I bet love, y'all conversations love, are fun. <laughs> I love uh, Russell Westbrook and Draymond Green. Uh, mm-hmm. Those are guys. Uh, they, they just gritty. They go out anybody. Don't care right. who you are. Right. So I love those two. Yeah. But LeBron, he always been my favorite player. Have you ever played any other sports besides basketball? No. Nah. I, I mean, no. Nah, I never played no other sports. Really? Nah. Why not? I just love basketball. That's why I just even from an early thing. age, never little league football. Yeah, anything. my dad always played basketball, and I was always around it, so I just been always played basketball. Never, never did nothing else. Oh, it was always always about hoop. Who's best I, teammate you've ever had? Capone, easy, easy Capone. Capone Richardson. He had seven charges in one game. He it, took seven charges in one game. In seven one game. in one game. In one wow. Game. He he was a he was. A, he can't do nothing. Like as in skill, he had no skill. Can't <laughs> dribble. Listen, he can't can't dribble. Can't shoot. Terrible free throw shooter. Uh, uh, he was a little athletic and he could pass pretty good, but everything else had no left hand to save his life. But he always got it done. But you had to have him on the floor. Yeah, he, he always got the job done. Whatever you need to get done, he that got blue. the job done. I feel like, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, well, me, it was me, Malik. Rodney, we all got. I got suspended. Uh, um, Rodney got suspended. Malik was out. Capone was averaging eighteen points and nine assists a game, <laughs> and he can't do. And he, was, <laughs> and, he was, and, he, and he was running point, and he was getting the job done. Like against Eastmore, they almost won. Like. We they we lost by like was he two letting y'all points. know was huh? he letting y'all know <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah he always come up to me like I'm the uh, the second string point guard I'm like this I said this is not football <laughs> <laughs> you can't be a strict <laughs> second string point guard I think I have tweets about that <laughs> <laughs> yeah but uh he always got the job done he is easily the best teammate easily mm-hmm. so let's go through some of the. Uh, some of the seniors on your team, some of the guys that you fought the battles with over these last couple of years, let's shout those guys out, and then we'll let you get a chance to, you know, I'm gonna, this gotta shout dad and your family and all those people that's watching you stream a live on the YouTube today. So let's let's hit your teammates first, man. Let's give those guys a, a you know, little parting shout out here. Uh, shout out to Wayne. Little dread head, he we we told him a thousand. He actually he was supposed to cut his dreads. He said if I scored twenty five or more points, he was gonna cut him. He never cut him, so he still owed me. <laughs> Sean, Listening, Sean Petitiano, shout out to him. Uh, Humble beast number twenty four. Uh, the Asian assassin. That's what, that's what Rice called him. I called him the return. Uh, he said, <laughs> Humble beast. Humble beast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Shout out to him. Uh, Shout out to my mom, my dad. Shout out to Coach Rice, co- the whole coaching staff, Coach Swizzle. <laughs> I call him Curly Head. <laughs> Shout out to Rodney Willis. He went crazy this past yeah, season. Um, we about to just do a shout out show right now. <laughs> <laughs> you got to. Here's your question. This we your got time. Left. Yeah, we got and we got another segment, but yeah. I want. I always like to make sure we get it in because I don't want to rush it at the end. Right, right, right. right, hey, right. I know you had something to say about that soft game, like about the last possession. 
I mean, if you want to bring it up, look. Uh, now nah, he might have a future on the radio. You see, how he coming back with the question like, "Now, now, may I ask you something?" <laughs> we, we might have to get into it after the break, and, and, but I'll, I'll let you explain yourself after the break. But we talked on the phone before, and I already said South was undefeated. Briggs had him on the road. You had South on yeah, the road, you know, and um, the the census of the entire gym was the best player in the gym. Danny Corbett passed the ball to somebody else at the end of a game that he was supposed to have the ball, make the last, the game when it shot. He gets one origin, they hit the shot too. Yeah, get it out of there. It was just weird because it was like, he was kind of around half court and you know what I mean? So, but I, I'll let you break that whole thing down and you know, just because I'm a South alumni and you know what I'm saying? I just kind of brought it up to him one day. And we, we got to bring him the best point guard in Central Ohio. Uh, we gotta bring that that topic up too. Uh oh, hey. look, 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 it's getting deep. I love it. <laughs> <is good. laughs> we'll be right back. The like, Central Ohio time. High School Showcase the COHSS Fire <laughs> in the booth today. We'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> this is Bob McElligot, the radio voice of the Columbus Blue Jackets, and you're listening to the new generation of sports talk radio. Scoreonair.com. The score. Hey guys, Matty Ice here, proud alum of the Ohio Media School. Get the training you need to get a job you will love. The Ohio Media School has classes in radio, television, sports broadcasting, and film and video production. Visit BeOnAir.com today to get started. That's BeOnAir.com. What's good, Big Game James? How you feeling, D.O. Jr.? My guy, I'm super excited. High school sports is starting back, man. Man, I'm even more excited because we got this new show starting. Tell the people what we doing, D.O. Jr. Man, we starting the Central Ohio High School Showcase, the C-O-H-S-S. That's right. We're covering football, basketball, baseball, soccer, volleyball, and track and field. If it's in season, we on it. Hey, you know we do this for the kids, man. You can listen live by going to scoreonair.com via the TuneIn app or watch us streaming live by going to the Score On Air YouTube channel. The C-O-H-S-S, giving you nothing less, showcasing Central Ohio's best. I'm Jake Safranco with your Sports Doc Minute, brought to you by the OHSAA and the Ohio Media School. Now here's the Sports Doc, Dr. Chris Stankovich. When we think of athletes, Athletes like Derek Jeter, Kobe Bryant, or Tom Brady, often the first word that comes to mind is clutch. These are the types of athletes who seem to perform their best when the pressure is on. Did you know that clutch athletes aren't necessarily born that way? But what separates them from the competition is that clutch players are not afraid to fail. That's the biggest difference. In fact, they want the ball when the game is on the line. You know, in order to really solidify this point, you might want to go back to an old Michael Jordan commercial where he talked about not how many shots he made when the game was on the line, but how many times he missed. So it's important that we note, in order to perform our best in clutch situations, we have to want the ball in those situations, and we cannot be afraid to fail. Otherwise, we will fail in clutch situations. This has been your Sports Doc Minute, brought to you by the OHSAA and the Ohio Media School. Enrolling now, visit BeOnAir.com. Tuesdays from 12 to 2 p.m., it's the Beermonger Sports Sessions on ScoreOnAir.com, the new generation of sports talk radio, The Score, and it's not your regular sports show. Hey guys, Scott Shelton here again, campus director for the Ohio Media School. Are you looking for a career in media, radio, television, sports broadcasting, or film and video production? You need to come check out the Ohio Media School's Columbus campus. You want a job that you will love, and we have the training to get you started. Stop by the Ohio Media School's audio and video studio to check out the opportunities and internships that we have for our students and graduates. Call 614-655-5250 or visit beonair.com. That's beonair.com. You're listening to scoreonair.com, the new generation of sports talk radio in Columbus. Online sports radio, WSOA, scoreonair.com, the score. <laughs> We talked about Will Yoakum on the show before. Yeah, we gave we, we gave Will we gave Will Yoakum some good love. Shout out to Will Yoakum. And, and he doesn't look like it. I mean, he, he, I mean, he just doesn't have the love. Welcome back to the Central Ohio High School Showcase, the COHSS. Call or text the show, 614-641-0674 from 270 Hoops. I mean, he, look, he is the 
guru when it comes to Central Ohio basketball. He knows a lot more about other sports too. And we'll get into that because we might be seeing him uh, talking about some the, the bats Baseball. and the gloves and the, the shortstop and that outfielder. Jump shot. Who, Zach's? Yes. Zach got a legendary I'd jump shot. I'd out you right now. I'd out you right now. I'd out treat you right now. Hey, probably. <laughs> I said your shot was legendary. I don't want, this, I don't want, to, I don't want it to be a, a James better. Harden, Stephen A. Smith situation. Better. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but now we are back. Uh, outstanding show today. Zach Fleer is here. Uh, big game James, Roy Yates, the veteran Lee Saw has been over there grinding for me. Thank you very much. Appreciate it all morning. Danny Corbett, Jr. So, look. We was talking about Danny, and Danny has just turned into basically a, a, a you know, a, a barbershop segment. So let's get into it, man. Uh, we got one segment left, just 12, 13 minutes. You asked some questions. You asked me about the best point guard where? Uh, Central Ohio. The best point guard in Central Ohio. Regardless of class Re- or? Only regardless. Jeremiah Francis. Dominic Penn. <sighs> I like Dominic Penn, too. Right now? Right now. Right now. See, how can you say someone? How do? How can if someone come up to Dom? How can you say Jeremiah Francis is better than you? Like when they, when they went to head to head, I mean Dom won that matchup. But I that's think what I'm all saying. around, I think Jeremiah just gives you more right now. I like I think the, from a physicality standpoint. Yeah, that's where I was. That, that, I was that about that's where I was. Size. Yeah, I mean, Dom, si- Dom's incredible. Don't get me wrong, but the size. I mean, he's still he's still he just turned 15. Like, he's wiry. He's wiry. He's, he's got to put some weight on. I mean, he yes. doesn't score at the rim as well as Jeremiah does. He, absolutely. But he shoots better than Jeremiah. And does. he has a lot. Of, he's creative around the rim as well. And his IQ him. as well. I mean, them, them two guards. No, they, they, those two and everybody. And, right, right, right. Those this two this everybody is else. not a knock. Like, I got, anybody that's listening, I don't want to happen what usually happens in situations like this where somebody says they like somebody and then that means that you don't like the other person. What that's we are saying is they are both. Both are yeah, they both nice. Amazing. Both yes. are nice. Amazing. Super nice. Yes. Super amazing. But in my opinion. You know what I'm saying? I I like Dom a little bit better. You like Jeremiah? I, I, I mean, I like them both. Yeah, I, I mean, I we both like one, them both. I yeah, one in their in their they're one A and one B. Classes, so. Yes, yeah, I think. I mean, I, think I mean, they both have the great genes. I mean, Buckeye yes. sons. So. <laughs> I mean, well, me. Yeah. I I think it's hard to say. I mean, I think it's hard to say any guard could do what I did at Briggs. Definitely this year. Um, facing a face guard <laughs> everywhere you went, facing someone that's Constantly following you every single where you're going, playing every minute of every game this season. Didn't get out no games. Uh, playing with the talent level I played with, forcing come uh, every game, getting double team every time I touched it, triple team every time I touched it. I don't think a lot of players, not even just guards, I don't think a lot of players can't, can't deal with that. I, I, listen, listen, that's every listen. game too, and not getting out. And I'm, I'm not, I'm not. We're gonna suck up because you're here, but what you said has so much validity to it. Yeah. People don't understand what it's n- like not to get a rest mentally, to be the Challenge. primary ball handler every minute. <laughs> like, yeah, like, it's, every it's, minute, it's mental, every position. Yeah, it's mentally challenging. What, what's really mental is when you come down, you break the double team. And then you kick it to an open guy. <laughs> he drops the pass. <laughs> <laughs> he dropped the pass, or the guy go one well for ten. Terrence Yates, but you know what I'm saying? Oh, <laughs> like, nah, shout out to Terrence, man. He, I love that guy. But, uh, yeah, it's like but, dude, but, but, most teammates, they might get frustrated, start yelling, or start, you know what I mean, breaking down. I think it's – I think it's. I think nowhere near. Like, I don't, I don't think – no, I think it's no one in the guard position that could really do that this year. I don't think no one near. I, it's, but it's a lot of – I'm with you on this. I'm with you on this. And what you are saying, I feel like, will help you so much at the next level, wherever mm-hmm. that may be. Because you you have lived the adversity, the frustration of a bad shooting game by a teammate or whatever, and you still continue to love those guys, to be coached by a coach, to go out and run the same plays next game. That You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And you still had the confidence to pass them the ball, to pass the teammate the ball, and believe that uh, that the shot will go in. So I, would, I, would, I, I saw you play. Um, not as long as Zach had from day one, but uh, I love your game, and uh, I don't think you should take a backseat to anybody. Um, I guess the kind of question that, ha- as it was being posed, I guess we're kind of looking at right now today, and what these young men, especially the young men that we brought up, could be in the future, which but is not fair to you. Absolutely, that's yeah, not yeah, fair yeah, to yeah, you. Yeah, but that's kind of the world of sports that we live in right now. Right. Um, but I, I look, I'm with you 100. percent I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't tell you to take a backseat to anybody. And uh, if we was in a foxhole, 
uh, with it, you know, and they was jumping up the ball. I'll put you on my team anytime. Let's go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, we could go to the South situation. <laughs> go ahead and explain yourself. Why did you pass what the happened? ball? What happened? Talk about it. We got to give our viewers a scope. Yes. Okay, so, so I, I can't remember the score. It was basically the last possession. Mm-hmm. Last possession of the game, Briggs is going to have a chance to knock South, South off, give them their first loss of the season. Um, Mr. All Everything, you, Danny Brig, Danny Corbett, the Briggs. Danny Briggs, that, that works. <laughs> <laughs> I like that too. I like it too. You like that. Um T-shirts, I get some of that. <laughs> I get some of that, man. We got the video. We heard it here. We got the first. video. Danny Briggs. $5 Tone $5 Rice, get on that, Tone. $5 shirts from Danny Briggs. Yeah, I like it. I like it. I like it. This is what we do here. Um, why were you giving up the ball in that situation, knowing that you were the guy that was supposed to make that play? I was going to double team. I thought the right place supposed to move, but Mario, he want to cut to the middle when he was dead open, but – uh. But me and Rice talked about that possession. Uh, see, this is another thing. You got to think more than a game. And what I mean by that is sometimes someone might be butt naked, but you might be better. Like, you just got to think so much ahead when it comes to playing with, like, the talent level I play with. You got to mm-hmm. think so much ahead. So, me and Rice, we, we watched the game, and he was like, uh, you, go, you throwing it to Mario. I mean, that's cool if you play with Pig Central, but me – I wouldn't want you to go two on one at that position at that at that time, and uh, like it was my, my dad, he didn't like uh, uh, he didn't like he didn't like that I did that, and uh, I just tell my dad I always tell my dad uh, I just the only thing I can ask myself is make the bas- the right basketball play, yep. and Wright said the same thing like I feel you on that, but sometimes you make the right basketball play too much, that's what he told me, so it was like one. That's a compliment. Sometimes it works, and I mean, not every shot's gonna fall. I mean, when they played on the road at West last season, you had the ball, last possession. I believe you guys were down one in that game. Mm -hmm. Danny came off a screen. You could have taken two on one, but you found Garrett wide open under the basket. He puts the layup in. They win the game. Yeah, uh, against yeah, Wano Ridge, yeah. you passed. It was Terrence in the corner, right? Yeah, I passed. And he Mario he struggled that whole game to yeah, shoot the yeah, ball, he, but he, he hit like the one that counted. 15, yo, but he hit yeah. the one that counted. So I think when colleges are watching these guys. One thing that goes into it is, does he make the right play? Is he an unselfish teammate? Um, what's his IQ level? And for you making the right play, that that means a lot. I mean, yes. coaches okay. want guys that are going to be able to be coached and are going to be able to you know play within a system. And that that's most important, making the transition, is can you play in the system? Can you make the right basketball plays? You know, coaches that have watched Tavion Kinsey, I love that about him too. I mean, mm-hmm. Tavion could take a lot of selfish shots, but I think he makes the right pass a lot mm-hmm. of the time. Gets his teammates involved, and that's one thing that a lot of these schools are, you know, taking notice of. I, I totally go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was just saying. <clears throat> I mean, just the situation, the four years you were there, the, the teammates that you played with. I feel like you're set up for success because, as we all have been talking about, you've been through the adversity. You've been through, and, and mentally, it's a mental game. It's a physical game, but they always say it's like twenty percent or ten percent physical, eighty ninety percent mental. It really is. And that mental thing that you went through this four years, this is going to carry you when you, when, you, when you get to college because it's not something that you're going to be like, I haven't seen this before. You've seen this before. And then when you have those teammates that can make those shots, it's only just going to make you a better player. So I just think that these four years, you staying in school, staying at the school, you staying under Rice, I think you did the really, I think you did the right thing. And I think it's really going to propel you. I think this is going to make you take you to a higher level just because you did that, because it's going to make you even more mentally stronger. So I applaud you for doing what you did this year. Mm-hmm. Great career, all everything, thousand point score, four year starter. Um, and a lot of thousand point scores out there either. Yeah, like you said, with well, it's three in the, the whole history yeah. of the school. The third one. It's not easy. So, brilliant yeah. career. You got a minute left, man. Go ahead. It's all you. Just talk about whatever. Whatever, whatever you got. You got a minute left. Anything. Oh, uh, oh. <laughs> it's PG now. Yeah, PG. <laughs> it's PG. It's PG. No. Go ahead. You got a minute. Parents, family. Whatever. Uh, Whatever <laughs> It's kind of Basketball Yep it's, it's tough We talked a lot About a lot I, I don't got nothing else I told you Watch Carl Malone uh, yo, 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 yo. Watch Carl Malone Give me some I, questions I, Any question uh, Color Anything No you know what I, I know Zach's gonna continue Doing what he does As far as uh, with coaches and, and all that But from the From the Central Ohio High School Showcase And I'm sure Zach Feels the same way just good luck with everything. Stay on the grind. You mm-hmm. love the game. Opportunities are out there. Don't get discouraged. Okay. Um, just 
stay on it. Mm-hmm. You know, and I want to see your career. Yeah, if you love the game, the game will give you something good back. Um, you, your coach, uh, Coach Tone Rice, I'm sure he's got the fillers out there as well. So. Uh, anything that I can do as well, I got some uh, up to that I'm going to put on the page later and we'll, we'll talk about. But anything that I can do as far as any kind of highlights and stuff that you got, you want me to put and post somewhere, anywhere, I got that for you, man. It was, uh, thank you very much for coming in. Thanks for having I me. I appreciate that. Um, it's Great Danny time Cor- today. Danny yeah. Corbett Jr. from Briggs, West Side, stand up. You know him, Zach. Come on, close it. You know, we, we if you love the game here. and you work, you'll be great at it. And you do that. I mean, from day one, ever since I've watched you, you've always had a passion for the game. You've always played hard. Uh, and that that's gonna carry you somewhere. Do you if you love the game, do you give it your hundred percent? And you do every time every time you're on the floor. Um and I guess, you know, with your situation, you've battled a lot of adversity already and a lot of kids when they make that transition from high school to college, you know, they haven't, you know, met something that was tougher than them. You have. And that transition's gonna be, you know, easier for you. A lot of kids struggle mm-hmm. going to college because mm-hmm. they've never been criticized, they've never been put under the microscope, put under the pressure. You have. You're battle tested. I think whatever school gets you is getting, you know, a, a kid that's going to be ready to come in day one as a leader and take responsibility and know what he needs to do. And I think it's going to, you know, really help you in your college career going forward. Big game, um, James. I just want to say big ups to you. Um, I can't wait to follow your career. Uh, your personality is great. Um, and even if you do anything outside of basketball, hey, you might want to check this out right here because you're pretty good hey. behind that mic. <laughs> pretty, hey. good behind, pretty good behind that mic. Hey. Yes, you are. You feel me? <laughs> you're pretty good behind that mic. Great personality. The veteran Lee Halls? <laughs> I, I forgot he was in the room. <laughs> I'm just over here doing my thing, trying to get the board back together for you. Yeah. Uh, we good. Go get some homework done. Hey, I'm Derek Owens Jr. We do this every Saturday morning, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. here on Score on Air, the new generation of sports talk radio. The Score. This is the Central Ohio High School Showcase. Go on like the Facebook page. I got some big stuff going on. I think me and Zach gonna get together a couple more times yep. before the end of this year. We got some baseball to talk about. Uh, my season is starting track and field. Uh, y'all go check Abby Steiner out. If you go see one person in track and field, just go see Abby Steiner. But we'll talk about her as the season continues. Shout out to Tremaine Peppers, my my guy. T yeah. Pep, what's up, man? <laughs> he's, supposed, I got, I, he's another wild I one. Central. Yeah. He was supposed to be on the <laughs> show, man. We gonna he's another wild. He, he, he wild too. Ball. Everybody <laughs> knows him, man. He, he loves Everybody. Thad Mata. Thad yeah. Mata's his favorite coach of all time. Yeah, I, think, <laughs> I, I, think, I think he's mine too, though. It's the C O H S S, man. We'll see y'all next week.